It's this one right here. I see the car. All right. Let's check it out. All right, so we just jumped out of the truck, saw the house that we're about to go into. I can almost smell the car from here, or at least the abandoned smell. We have to find the car and figure out how we're gonna get it out there and into the trailer and back to Cleveland. So I guess let's go take a look. Yeah. Oh, I can smell it. <coughs> oh God. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's gross. Wow. This ceiling looks like it could come down. Yeah, that joist Jeez. looks like it's about to about to go. Do I dare open the door? Uh oh. Ugh. That's my million dollars in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go take a peek. We'll do a little exploring around this house. Boy. Oh, oh my god. This is a fixer upper. Dude, this is just a fixer. It's not even an upper. What the? So here you have a nice sunlight, you know, yeah. fresh air. And breezeway. And breezeway. <laughs> mud room. Got RJ a nice new mug. It is frozen to the ground. I can't pick it up. <laughs> Please try to pick it up. Oh. Wow. Let's, uh, let's get out of this area before this falls on us. I've never seen a house like this. Oh, nice brick, you know? The yeah. foundation looks nice. We could fix this up. <laughs> That's like what we do all the time with cars, right? It's the same. <laughs> Abandoned house gets first pressure washing in 90 years. You could do a good pressure washing video on that one. <laughs> oh my God. So this is where we were, I think. Yes. You think you could jump from here to over there? <laughs> <laughs> the question is, would the floor hold me um, I think uh, over when, there. I, when I land? I think over there. Wow. Okay. Dude, this whole wall is just disconnected. Yeah, this thing's really what beat up. The... How does it get like this? Like this must have been, Years left. Dude, this locking situation's secure. <laughs> it's a mess. So I'm going to rip through this. Don't fall through the floor. Oh my God. Okay, definitely don't go in there. That is over the BMW. That's the hole that we're seeing. This all looks so bowed down. All right, yeah, I wouldn't recommend walking close to each other or in the house much at all. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this isn't an, an upper or a fixer at this point. <gasps> okay, I'm going back out. Never mind. I'm out. Yeah. See you later. Bye, Brian. That was the house saying goodbye. Leave. All right, this is just a little bit too dangerous for us to explore anymore. We're going to go just get the car. All right, let's head back up front and see if we can open up the garage. So first things first, the only way we're going to get this garage door open is we got to remove all of these panels, which is already not a good sign that this is here. Let's go grab some tools and see if we can get these out of here. Yeah, you're right. We do need a drill with a Phillips head. Some of them have screws, Shoot. some of them have hammer and nails. I didn't bring a drill. No, we don't got any tools? I have the box, I just don't have the drill. All right, you guys are gonna roast me here because this is pretty ridiculous, the way that I'm going to be using this impact drill. We got a couple reducers going down to my Phillips head. Let's see if I can get some of these out of here. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm not doing this by hand because that was gonna be the plan. Look at that, that guy only had one screw. Nice. This is our last board. I'm actually very glad that this actually worked because doing this by hand would be terrible. And there we go. We're gonna try shimmy it. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. Not bad. Yeah, just be careful. Oh, no. what's, what's going on? Is it hitting the joist? Oh, we got it. We'll make it. Just keep pushing that door thing down. That's it. Last plated in, uh, looks like 2010. Jeez. Ew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So first of all, leave a comment if you guys want us to start filming more videos like this where it's more raw and unfiltered. But to get this BMW out of this garage, we backed our truck up to it and tried pulling it out and instantly we had a massive problem. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What? The back wheel just turned sideways. Uh-oh. I had it around the big control arm on the bottom, but it looks like it just ripped the wheel off. Full control arm off the car. There's nothing really to, to do with them. It's just that it was such an bad shape. Well, we pull the truck back, I undo this, lift it up, push it back in, and then we hook it somewhere else. That's our only option. I didn't realize it was that corroded that it was gonna mess up like that. This control arm has officially left the chat, and we need to lift this car up and figure out how we're gonna do this. <laughs> oh boy. That's the rustiest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it's 
so rusty, dude. Holy crap. That's not good. Is it still possible? That is a question that I do not have an actual answer for. So our plan here was because there was nowhere to pull the car from the back, we figured out that there were actually tow hooks from the front. And originally we weren't going to turn the car around because it was frozen to the ground. So we didn't think we could, but at this point we were almost out of options. So this was our last hope. And you can see over the last 14 years, how this house has been falling apart on top of this car. But I want to ask the question of the video. So leave your answers in the comments below. Given how long this car has been sitting in this damp garage and what condition that you can already see it's in, do you think it's even worth saving or is it a parts or even scrap car? leave a comment. And I also want to say that we're trying to get to 825,000 subscribers by the end of this month, which is only four days away. So that means we need 7,000 subscribers in four days. But I know that a lot of you watching are not subscribed. So make sure that you are because I guarantee with your help, we can destroy that goal. And if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to leave it a like because it really helps us out. We got Brent watching the traffic, taking care of them. Me and RJ put this Wait, in. Cambered out to the max. Oh, I can't believe it worked. I'm so happy it worked. <laughs> Dude, we kind of recovered cars pretty ah, good. Uh, Heavy D hit us up. This was a miserable experience. We did not think this thing was going in after we blew that. I would say that is probably top three worst recoveries we've ever done. For sure. The only one that I think was worse was the Eclipse that you guys never actually saw because we never did it because we couldn't get the car. Well, we never recovered it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, the Porsche 944 was awful getting oh, it out yeah. of there. And then uh, probably the R8 was the worst. But uh, yeah, this one, this one took the cake. It stunk in there and we broke it. <laughs> yep. But <laughs> gladly Whoops. we got it. It's in the trailer. We're in PA heading back home now. Also, if any of you have any cars that look like that, that are enthusiast vehicles that are that level of dirty, send us pictures of it in our email. We want to travel to you. We want to do the car wherever you live in the United States, or we'll come pick it up, bring it back to our shop, detail it and bring it back to you. Send the pictures to this email. Thanks. I sure hope it doesn't break. Why? What's going to break? Uh, I don't know if you've seen that uh, positive camber on the left tire, but... <laughs> <laughs> You're pulling it from the front? I had nowhere else to hook it up to. Uh-oh, that was the axle. It just plopped on the ground. It's yeah, fine. You know, I have some of my most profound thoughts sitting under a crappy car on a dirty floor. One of those profound thoughts was how we were going to keep that wheel from completely blowing off the car while we drag it into the shop. Mike decided to ratchet strap it to the other wheel to keep them closed. Uh, we don't know if this is gonna work, and I might just stay here until the Harbor Freight Jack does its job and- It's gonna work. All right, go. Ready? Yeah. Uh, it's going toward, it's going that yeah. way. It's going that way to the right. Brad, Brad, come on. Run, Brad. <laughs> Shimmy it over. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so easy. That was Brad, that wasn't you. Brad's strong. The way that you set the strap on top of the car, it looks like a bow. That's an Annie Ann's pretzel. Okay, now that the BMW is home with us where it belongs, we're gonna start cleaning it up and see if there's anything to salvage underneath all of this disgusting garbage, beginning with vacuuming all of the loose debris on top of it and inside the jams of the trunk. What's this? RJ, come here, I got your birthday gift. Here you go, chum. I know how much you love watches. Wow, that's uh, thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Um, well, fortunately, this video sponsor is Holzkern, and thankfully, they gifted me a much nicer watch that won't give me gangrene and make my hand fall off. Every car guy needs a great watch, and Holzkern provides a huge selection of wood-infused watch designs that are completely unique and different than most of the watch industry. Hence the name Holzkern, which in German means wood core. They also carry a large selection of jewelry and fashion pieces for men and women with over a thousand pieces on their online catalog. The pieces are all one of a kind and blend natural materials with industry standards. And all the wooden materials that are used are FSC certified, which is the Forest Stewardship Council, meaning that the wood used is all sustainable and responsibly sourced. My favorite things about the watch that Holzkern sent me 
was the wood bezel around the dial of the watch, the size of the case, and the little fingerprint on the crown, showing how unique it is. Polskern also hooked up Mike and Brent with wood-infused sunglasses that make them look significantly cooler than they actually are. With over 10 physical stores in Germany and Austria, as well as international shipping, whether you're stateside or abroad, Holzkern can make your jewelry dreams a reality. I also got a ring from my girlfriend for Valentine's Day from Holzkern, and I'm just really hoping that she doesn't see this video before February 14th. So if you wanna find a watch that matches you and your car's aesthetic, or a gift for a loved one for Valentine's Day, or if you just wanna look as cool as Mike and Brent, go to www.holzkern.com slash wddetailing and use code WDDetailing15 for 15% off your whole entire order. Or click the link in the description or a pinned comment below. And honestly, just go click the link. It's a lot easier than typing. Again, that's code WDDetailing15 for 15% off your whole entire order at holtzkern.com slash WDDetailing. Now let's get back to that BMW. And next with all the jams vacuumed, we're gonna take all the debris off the hood and start pressure washing all this dust away. And this is where things get really satisfying. And now before pressure washing the BMW off, we're gonna pre-soak it with our degreaser. And we've been working on our own products for quite some time now and using it in all of our videos when we use degreaser on the cars. So any moldy car you've seen us pressure wash, any dirty car you've seen us pressure wash, if we use the pre-soak in it, that's what we've been using for the past few years. We wanted to make sure it was perfect before we put it out to you guys. Hopefully you're as excited as we are because we cannot wait for you to have the only product that we trust to use on all of our videos. And you're gonna be able to use it on the exterior, on the interior, on the wheels and it's going to give you the exact same results that you're seeing us get in every single video but once it's officially released we'll tell you all about it Now with the wheels clean, we're gonna keep moving along the car and hit this rear quarter panel and then open up that gas door and see what's hiding behind it because I can guarantee there's a ton of dirt in there.
All right, so now in the interior of the BMW, we have to get this hood open. And if you can see, this is the hood latch cable. You see that? Yay. That's disconnected, but the wire is still here to pull on. So I'm going to try to get some vice grips and give it a good old yank. The best. Okay. Oh, man. Uh oh. So to open these hoods, usually this piece is inside here and it's a little latch and there's a little latch that connects to one of the hinges that this hood operates where if it works properly, the hood releases forward and then you can lift the hood from the windshield forward. But the hinges were rusted solid. So in order to actually get those unrusted, we had to be pretty mean to this hood. So we took the front end off, took out the headlights. Obviously this guy left. And then <laughs> we had to get a little creative with some crowbars, but we didn't do that much damage. Our good buddy Brian actually has one of these, so he's gonna get first dibs, whether he takes a windshield or maybe salvages some of the seats or something. I know this car will live on in some way, shape or form, but when cars sit in cold, dark places for long periods of time, they just rust. And it's not the first time we've had to get so aggressive with the hood or a door. The smell is consistent. It really is a shame. If you are gonna store a car, make sure it's in a dry place. You know, it can be, a rough place just needs to be dry. So now we're gonna deep clean the engine because like we just mentioned, our buddy Brian's gonna come at the end of the video and take what he needs off this car. But I wanna test your knowledge. If you know what engine's in here, leave a comment down below. Mike, come here. <laughs> look, at, look at his face. Come here. <laughs> look at his face. It's all over your face. Mike. <laughs> I kid you guys not, all that stuff was completely unscripted. It just happened. It was really funny and we wanted to show you. But now we're going to put an iron remover on the paint to remove any iron that's been sitting for the last 14 years and rusting into the clear coat or in this case, non-existent clear coat. And then we'll use clay mitts with the iron remover as a lubricant to get any micro contaminants off the paint before RJ tries to do any kind of polishing later. Rubbing my mask. <coughs> yes. Oh, that's why that wasn't working. It's not connected. That would have made our lives way easier. Now that we have the seats out of this car, we can really take a look at all of this gross gnarliness that's in here. And just like the underside of the car that had a lot of rust, there seems to have been a ton of moisture in this car. So everything's wet and grimy and rusty, but I think we're going to be able to get a lot of this cleaned out and, uh, Hopefully, make this car not stink so bad. I'm gonna put this back on now. Take this mat out. Heavy. Oh my god, I didn't realize this was in here. Oh no. That's definitely its head. That's definitely its head, dude. Uh, see you later, little guy. You see him? Thank you. 
Now we're going to clean out the glove box, but because there were obviously rodents living in it, you can never get them 100% clean. But as you see Mike spraying, we're using our new degreaser in there, and we were definitely able to get it 99.9% .9 better. It did such a great job. Now we're gonna vacuum all the carpets and it's actually pretty amazing what just vacuuming can do in terms of a transformation. Now before we move on to do the trunk, we're gonna pre-treat the carpet with our degreaser and let it sit for quite a while while we're doing other things. So when we come back to it and clean it, it'll not only be clean, but hopefully a lot of those deep stains will come out.
Now let's see what kind of power our degreaser has against stains that have been sitting for 14 years. And also the carpet's gonna need some time to dry while we do other things before we put the seats and stuff back in the car. And here's the disgusting water we were able to pull out of those carpets. Leave a comment what you think it looks like. And for the seats prior to being cleaned, I wouldn't even sit on those with someone else's clothes. Now we're gonna bring all the plastic pieces back to life and you can just see how worn out they were in the before pictures after they're clean, but with some attention, they look brand new.
Now for polishing, we took the little spoiler off the back, which our friend Brian ended up taking with him for his own E30. And then we did a one step, which definitely made the paint look better. But as you could see on this exterior, the whole car would need an entire repaint. There is no saving what's actually there. All right, guys, we wanna give a shout out to a subscriber, Noah N from Illinois. Noah's a young kid that likes our videos and since we have an overstock on our merch right now, we thought we'd send Noah one of our WD logo shirts along with a sticker pack from our merchandise company. And apparently we're really bad at selling merch, so we're overstocked and we don't know what to do with it. So each week we're gonna give away a shirt and a sticker pack to a lucky subscriber. So if you wanna win a shirt and a sticker pack from us, go to the email that's somewhere on the screen, tell us which shirt that you want, and, uh, and we'll go ahead and give that out to one lucky subscriber each week as a thank you to you guys. And if you wanted to buy something, that'd be cool too, because we don't know what else we're gonna do with this stuff. But if not, no worries, and hopefully you end up being a winner. And last but not least, you guys can see exactly here what ended up happening with this car. Our buddy Brian has an E30. He came by the shop and he took a bunch of parts off of it that he needs for his own. And then the rest of the car is gonna go to somebody else. So this car is gonna live on through other cars. But some of the stuff he took was the tail light bulb trays, the idle air control valve hose, the fuse box and wiring, which means he's now gonna have heat because he doesn't have heat in his E30. So that's big for him. The air box and a few other things. So it's really cool to see that he's able to utilize this car that we brought back in his own car all right now that brian has dissected the car and grabbed parts for his e30 we are going to send this off to someone else <laughs> we're going to send this car off to somebody else so they can use some other parts whether it be the windshield maybe the seats some of the interior components or you know some more stuff in the engine bay maybe even the wheels we'll see but this car is going to live on in other e30s which is our whole goal of the channel is to save these enthusiast cars that don't deserve to die in a gross garage by themselves all lonely they deserve to be repurposed and put into cars that will see the light of day again if you guys enjoyed the work that we did on this car please hit like if you want to see more videos like this hit subscribe and we'll catch you next week